We're going to take some few minutes to take missions updates. Then our brother Solomon will come and push the matters that the Lord has put on his heart a little bit. Then we'll come and conclude. We're bringing the responsibility, the role of a church in missions. And we're praying at that point as the Lord helps us. Please, Brother Matthew, can you come? Next 10 minutes, take. It's weekend of missions and uh, evangelism when we are emphasis. Say it in more than twice for it to be said is emphasized. So as we're coming up, several of us don't be tired. It's just uh, we. I was in a church. I was also given the opportunity to talk about missions. And when I was done, someone apprehended me and said, "Why are we always guilty as if they are not serving?" So I said, "How?" He said, "We." They are rich people. People who have not heard the gospel. That in my own thinking now, do I think there is any place in the world that people have not heard the gospel? So it's on the basis of that that I want to just bring this short update for you to know uh, what is happening in the world now concerning missions. Uh, for want of time, we will not start from the beginning. We'll just jump and go to slide six. So, brethren, if you are there, just kindly take us to slide six. Of course, we know that people we call the, the unreached people groups that people who have not heard the gospel have not had uh, more than 2% of evangelical Christians and all of that. So, uh, slide six, please. Okay, why they are trying to get to slide six, you just be listening. When the scene comes, you also be listening and be seeing. Now, the world is said to be about 8.1 billion people now. Now, out of these 8.1 billion people, we have a people groups. As we're referring to the Igede nation, the Idoma nation, the Tiv nation, people groups. So the people groups are 17,445 that we have in the world. Let me also say that when it comes to statistics about human beings, the figure is not always absolute. Uh, is, is a research is done and is assumed that this is the figure that is for this uh, area. So we have about 17,445 people groups in the world. Now out of that number, there are about 7,400 unreached people groups, totaling 3.4 billion people. That is about 42.2, I mean 42.4% of the world population. So the people that have not been reached with the gospel of Christ, they total up to 3.4 billion people. I'm not saying 45 billion people, it's 3.4 billion people that have not heard the gospel. Now, slide seven. The total reached people groups are 7,070. That is a population of about 3.74 billion. That is 47.7% of world population. What does that mean? When we say about 3.74 billion people are reached, we are assuming there are people that have identified with Christianity as a religion. It includes all the white government church, the Celestia, the Catholic, the Pentecostal, the Orthodox, Anybody at all that identifies with Christianity as a religion, they all fall into this uh, 3.74 billion people. And you know what we're talking about? That by these statistics, it's assumed, for example, that the T people have been reached. So going by these statistics, it's assumed all the T people are saved. They are reached with the gospel. Now, all the Edoma people by these statistics are saved. Once a people group has a number of over 2% of evangelical Christians is assumed they have been enriched with the gospel and they can self-evangelize. But we know that the two people years have been enriched, the Duma people have been enriched, so it's assumed that all the people in Benue State are Christians. They are believers. 
So if the trumpet sounds now, by these statistics, everybody in Beno is supposed to go there. And all the, the people in the Catholic Church, all the people in the Celestia, all the people in the Church, Jehovah, all of them, they fall in that category. So as I'm talking, you should be having an understanding. If you subtract the number that you two are thinking now from this number, then you will know what we have left. And then there are about 144 unengaged, unrich people groups, numbering over 5.7 million souls. Now, for these ones, they have not heard the gospel. There is nobody preaching to them. There is no missionary working among them. There is no church that has taken the responsibility of engaging them with the gospel of Christ. They are just like that. They are left to their fate. If the trumpet sounds now, if Christ comes now, they have not even as much heard the gospel, not to talk of taking a decision of accepting Jesus. Uh, we will jump uh, the next two slides, which talk about the 1040 windows. We will have another time the chapel permits and gives us the opportunity to tell us about the 1040 window. But just to mention that the 1040 window is where we have the heart of all the things uh, that are negative in the world. The 1040 window, it cuts across, the, it's a geographical location with a rectangular area that cuts across North Africa, the Middle East, Asia, between 10 degrees, and north, 10 degrees north and 40 degrees north latitude. Now, it includes northern Nigeria and North Africa and all of that. Now, the, the population of the people living there is more than half of the world population. It's also in the 1040 window that you'll find the headquarters of all the major religions in the world, Christianity, Islam, Buddhism, and all of that. It's also in the 1040 window that you'll find the headquarters of terrorism. It's also in the 1040 window that you'll find uh, it's, it's also housing the, the poverty headquarters of the world. It's most populated. That is what goes on in the 1040 windows. But we don't have time to talk about it much. It's also called the resistant bed. Now, researchers have said that if the 1040 window, which is the resistant bird, is captured, the world is, is, is captured already for Christ. Now, uh, the next slide now, after, okay, go to the next slide. Go to the next one. Okay, the church at a glance vis-a-vis -vis the challenge for and of missions. Now, research shows that there are about 7 million churches in the world today. Now, in Nigeria, there are about 197 mega Pentecostal churches. Our church here is not included in, I'm talking of Living Faith, Deeper Life, Dunamis, Koza, uh, the Potter's House, uh, Salvation Ministries, Power City. These are the mega, any ministry that doesn't house more than 10,000 people is not considered a mega church in this category. So we have about 197. The last time I checked was two days ago. And no church in Benue was among the mega churches. So out of the 197 mega churches, Pentecostal churches, I'm talking of Equa, Methodist, Baptist, NKST, Catholic, I'm not talking of those. I'm talking of the mega Pentecostal churches like Dunamis. We have 197 of them. Now out of these, the Redeemed Christian Church of God alone has about 32,000 branches in Nigeria alone. It's already more than the total people groups that we have in the world. Living Faith has 21,000 churches in Nigeria alone. It's also more than the total number of the people groups we have in the world, whether rich or region engaged. Living Faith churches, I'm talking about the membership, there are churches in Nigeria alone far at numbers, the, the total number of people groups we have in the world. Now, the world has 195 countries, and then in Africa we have 54 countries. The mega Pentecostal churches in Nigeria alone can conveniently share the countries of the world among themselves. Redeem, we decide and said, as for us, we are not focusing on any country of the world. We just, I mean, we're not focusing on more than one, we focus on one. Living faith to say, okay, since you are taking this one, we will take this one. Do not mean to say, okay, since you are taking that one, I will take this one. So if the mega Pentecostal churches in Nigeria alone, exclusive of all the chapels we have in Nigeria, if the 
the guy passes along said they will face the countries of the world within a year. Every country in the world, I mean every country in the world, we have missions work going on among them. But unfortunately, we still have the number of people not being engaged. Talking of countries now, the number of engaged people, uh, many of them are in the country. If only we will have these churches focusing on one, one country. I'm not talking of all the churches we have in America and China and all of that. Just the Nigerian church alone. If it decides to face the unreached people's groups, within a year, every people's group in the world will be reached with the gospel. Next slide. Shortly and then, the, but we see that what goes on is, is, is that we, we celebrate our sitting capacity as against our going and sending capacity. Next slide, please. Now, just a little about giving to missions. We have at least, out of the population of people in Nigeria, it said there are about 105 million Christians. It's possible we are more than that, but because we don't make noise and we're not domineering like the other religion. But even as we are quiet, it's, it's, it's said we are about 105 million Christians. So I assume that if we are about 105 million Christians, at least, at least 40 million should be born again. Now, if, so we have at least 40 million born again Christians in Nigeria. If every born-again Christian gives 200 naira every month, from the beginning of the month to the end of the month, if every born-again Christian in Nigeria gives 200 naira monthly, we would have raised 96 billion naira in a year for missions. That is the amount the church in Nigeria will raise. If every born-again Christian is giving just 200 naira every month, that is from the beginning of the month you are able to to work and labor and raise 200 naira to give for missions. But let's come back home. In the chapel, when you hear the secretary giving an announcement, he will say in the first service, we had about 150-something adults and so, so children. In the second service, like that. Now, if in the Good News Chapel, we put an average of 300, I will have 300 members in the Good News Chapel. If 300 members of the Good News, I mean, of the Good News Chapel Every one of them is giving 200 naira monthly. The chapel would have raised 720,000 naira yearly for missions. So imagine that the council decides that as a policy, every member of the Good News Chapel in a month, you will give 200 naira for missions. At the end of the, of the year, the chapel would have mobilized and raised 720,000 naira to send for missions. If you send 300,000 naira to a missionary on the field, Oh my goodness. You would have changed the, the story of that missionary. And then in 10 years, the chapel would have been raised, I mean, would have raised about 7.2 million naira to send to missions. We're not talking about the special offerings we give to missions or the missions awareness we raise. It's just that every month you are giving 200 naira. The chapel would have raised 720,000 naira in a year for missions. Sorry, next slide. The reality. What is the reality of what we have now? Is that globally, only 6% of the church income goes to missions. That is, if the church globally raises uh, 100 naira in a year, 6 naira is given to missions. Now, that is because churches in China, the church in China, America, have been very supportive. That is why the percentage has even risen to 6%. But in Nigeria, it said that the church gives less than 3% of our annual income to missions. Then, of the 6% that goes to missions, 87% of that 6% that goes to missions, goes to missions work in nations that, already, that are already reached, have Bibles and other Christian literatures in their languages. For example, when that 6% is being released, 87% comes to places like Nigeria, Ghana, and other countries that already have been reached and they have Bibles in their languages and other Christian literatures in their languages. Now, 12% goes to nations that have heard the gospel but have not decided to follow Jesus. And then only 1% goes to the people that have not heard about Christ. Only 1%. Only 1% goes to 
the people that have not been reached with the gospel. Now, as I'm saying this, I want you to, to also check yourself. Research also has it that 92% uh, of Christians in Nigeria have never given a dime to missions. Some is because they have sincerely not heard about missions. Some is because they have not known about missions. Some is because they have known, but they keep thinking, okay, 100 naira like this, what can it do? Let me just wait. When I'm able to raise uh, an amount that is reasonable, I will give. I tell you this, I will close. My, one of our leaders, particularly Uncle Toad, that was supposed to preach here, he went and preached in Lagos in one church, and he talked about missions, and the pastor felt so moved. And he said on Sunday he should raise missions awareness and whatever amount that is given to missions is to carry it and go. So on Sunday he did just that and the money was raised and when they counted it was 20 million naira. Now when they raised the 20 million naira and service closed and they went to the office, the pastor made and said, Cut. They, they have decided that they will also start a missions unit in the church. So they gave him 250,000 naira. As transfer to go that they work on it and see how they raise money and go uh, and, and, and give to him again. When he went after some time, he asked him, So, how far about the missions uh, uh, unit that you say you wanted to say? He said, Okay, we have some challenges with the building, so we did some renovations and we bought some equipment and all of that. That is how the money went. Brethren, that is the task of missions. It's so enormous. Your little contribution of 200 naira per month. You never can tell the magnitude to which it will help in world missions and evangelization. So let no one hear you, Alice least there's nothing you can do. Thank you. Till the day you will come, Jesus, I am your own. Till the day you will